Okay, so this week we are going to get right to the heart of our discussion about quantum mm -hmm. algorithms. Um, we're going to talk about the quantum factoring algorithm and the quantum Fourier transform. Now, the quantum Fourier transform is the workhorse of quantum algorithms. It's very closely related to the Hadamard transform. So let's see how. So let's do an example. Uh, let's say that we are working with a three qubit system and we do a Hadamard transform on those three qubits. So what does this mean? Well, the, if you apply the Hadamard transform to each of the three qubits, it's given by an eight by eight matrix which is suitably normalized, one over square root eight. And that's what the matrix looks like. Now, just to remind you how we get this, well, that's the Hadamard transform with a one over square root two in front of it. And then you tensor it up with itself. And what do you get? You get that if you tensor it up twice, you get the same block three times and negative of it once. The normalization factor becomes one over square root two times one over square root two. And then if you tensor it once more time, you get this. Okay. Now, one thing you should notice is that the columns are all plus and minus ones. They're orthogonal to each other, which means, in fact, that exactly half the entries have, are the same and exactly half the entries are opposite. Okay, so now let's look at the quantum Fourier transform on three qubits. So it's also an eight by eight matrix. But now it has these funny entries, omega, omega squared, etc. So what is, what is omega? Well, omega is a primitive eighth root of unity. So if you solve the equation x to the eight equal to one, okay. then you get eight complex roots, and omega is one of them. Eight complex solutions to this. So what's, what's omega? Omega is cosine two pi over eight plus i sine 2 pi over 8. Okay. Another way of writing omega is as e to the 2 pi over 8 i. Okay. If you've not seen this before, it's just notation. So now, in terms of omega, what are these eight complex roots of, um, of unity? Well, they are just 1 omega, omega squared, omega cubed, through omega to the 7. Okay, and these are exactly the entries of the Fourier transform matrix. Okay, we'll see more about this in the next video. Um, we'll also see that these, the, the columns of, of, uh, of this matrix are orthogonal to each other, um, that, that this normalization factor makes them unit norm, and that the quantum Fourier transform has a lot of very beautiful properties. Okay, so let me... Let me sort of say one thing about the quantum Fourier transform, about how similar it is in some sense, how it generalizes this Hadamard transform in a very interesting sense. So let's go back and see one of our applications of, of uh, the Hadamard transform, which was Simon's algorithm. So we were given this function f, where there was the secret number s such that f of x was f of x plus s, bitwise sum with s for every x. And our challenge was to discover this number s. The algorithm involved the Hadamard transform, so what we did was we had n qubits, initially zero, we applied the Hadamard transform to them, then we applied the function f, we had some more inputs, which were zeros, we measured these supplementary qubits. We applied a Hadamard transform again to the first n qubits. We measured, we got some value u, and u gave us a linear equation about s. So u dot s was zero. We collected n such linear equations and, and we solved for s. Now, there's a corresponding problem which uses the quantum Fourier transform. And it's a very fundamental problem. It's called period finding. Okay, I'll, right now I'm just sketching this to you. So we'll see all this in much more detail later. But in period finding, we are given a periodic function, meaning 
f of x equal to f of x plus r, where r is the period of the function. And this is what we are trying to discover. And it turns out that the algorithm for period finding looks very rem reminiscent of Simon's algorithm, except that we use the quantum Fourier transform in place of the Hadamard transform. So here's what it looks like. We apply a quantum Fourier transform and capital N by capital N Fourier transform. So think of capital N as two to the little n. So that's, that's the number of qubits. We go ahead and apply F. We measure these output qubits. We apply the QFT sub N again. We measure, we get some output T. And then T allows us to reconstruct R efficiently. So somehow, once we have T, it's easy to figure out what R is. Okay, so now it turns out that period finding is the main quantum step in Shor's quantum algorithm for factoring. And this is what we'll see in the next lecture. Okay, so what are we going to do in the rest of this lecture? So in the rest of this lecture, we'll talk about, well, the complex roots of unity. We'll talk about what in general is the quantum Fourier transform, the n by n quantum Fourier transform. We'll talk about the beautiful properties of the quantum Fourier transform. And then, unlike in the case of the Hadamard transform, where we almost defined it by the quantum circuit, in the case of the quantum Fourier transform, it's not immediately clear that there's an efficient quantum circuit or what the quantum circuit for the quantum Fourier transform looks like. And so that's the third thing we look at in this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll talk about period finding and how it leads to a quantum algorithm for... Okay, so let me just say a few words about these, these couple of lectures. Now, one thing you might realize at this point is that somehow the material we are covering now is getting a little more open-ended in the following sense. So what I've done is I've greatly simplified this presentation of, of factoring uh, so that it's accessible at this level. But some of you might, might, um, might want to know more. And if you do, well, there are, there are various ways you can do that. Well, first, there are more details available in the course notes. You can, of course, also refer to the reference books that we suggested at the end of the, at, at the that you, you, you can, of course, also refer to the reference books that I suggested uh, at the beginning of the course. But now some of you might, might feel that there's the opposite problem in the sense that you feel you don't really know enough. You don't have enough of a background for what we are talking about. So let me emphasize, I've, I've tried to make this as self-contained as possible, but you know, if, if you would like to, like to um, um, either brush up on your background or if you'd like to um, learn some of the background material. Again, you know, the course notes and the reference books are, are good places to go. But there's this additional reference which um, you have available online. It's, it's, a, it's an undergraduate textbook on algorithms. Um, so the, the pre-publication version of the textbook is available uh, on my website. So you can just download the appropriate chapters. So there are three appropriate chapters. If, um, if you really want to know all the background material in terms of how we transform the factoring problem into, into the quantum Fourier transform, uh, there's chapter one on modular arithmetic. The, the Fourier transform, the discrete Fourier transform, which is what we are using, is introduced in the second half of the of the, of the second chapter. This is the Fourier transform treated from the 
point of view of classical algorithms. And then chapter 10 is a treatment of quantum factoring, which might be interesting for some of you.